Here we have one of the most beautiful engravings from Robert Flood's vast encyclopedia on the microcosm and microcosm, which was published in 1617. It appears at the beginning of the first volume of this work, and thus perhaps serves to introduce and summarise Flood's view on the ways in which the worlds of macrocosm and microcosm are structured and interact with one another. At the top is written, the mirror of the whole of nature and the image of art. Thus, this engraving will show us how nature and art, the artifice of man, work to determine and structure the outer world. Above, God's divine name is seen, radiating light from within a cloud. Although God is in the highest heaven, he can reach down and control the lower spheres. Immediately below his lofty heaven are three heavens of angels. The seraphim, depicted as winged heads, cherubim as winged cherubs, and other choirs of angels, possibly the thrones, who hold out crowns in their hands. Beneath these three heavens is the sphere of the fixed stars, then the spheres of the seven planets, and finally the globe of the earth itself. The hand of God, his will in action, holds a chain which is attached to the right wrist of the female figure of nature. She is thus here to be seen, perhaps, as an emanation of God, an agent of his will. Nature has her head within the heaven of the angels. Around her head is a circle of stars and a nimbus of light. Her right breast has a little sun whose rays play down onto the earth and her left breast bears a little moon. She stands upon the earth globe with her right foot on land and her left in the seas. Flood's text states this as signifying the conjunction of sulphur and mercury. She is perhaps the anima mundi, the soul of the world. She stands between heaven and earth and thus spans the planetary spheres. From the planets, rays of influence descend down onto the earth below, the world of the elements. Nature holds a chain in her left hand through which she controls and directs the ape below, standing on the earth globe. This ape of nature is art, or the scientific ingenuity of man. Thus he holds up a little cosmic sphere, and is seen measuring it to discover its secrets. Beneath are shown the three kingdoms of nature, the animal, vegetable and mineral. On the left we see four mineral substances, gold, lead, antimony and talc. Lead and antimony are under the influence of Saturn. On the right are another four minerals, silver, copper, aura pigment and sal ammoniac. Copper and aura pigment are under the influence of the planet Venus. In the vegetable world, we see four types, berries, trees, flowers and roots, and grains. For the animal kingdom, we find eight representatives, the four on the right being the man, lion, serpent, and dolphin, while on the left are the woman, eagle, snail, and fish. Next we are shown four spheres on the earth for the work of the arts. The liberal arts, the arts which replace the influence of nature in the animal world, the arts which assist nature in the vegetable kingdom, and the arts which correct or improve on nature in the mineral realm. The liberal arts or sciences are divided into ten sections mechanics, timekeeping, 
map making, astrology, geomancy, arithmetic, music, geometry, artistic perspective, painting, and the arts of war and fortification. The arts which take the place of nature in the animal world are beekeeping, silk making, the artificial hatching of eggs, and medicine. The arts which assist nature in the vegetable kingdom are the grafting of fruit trees and the cultivation of the soil. The arts which correct or improve on nature in the mineral realm are the distillation through a cucurbit or alembic and a distillation using a retort.